Hello, how is it going? Today, I want to share with you guys a new format of video, a new series, if you would like to call it. We're going to call this a deck spotlight. As for myself personally, I spend a lot of time climbing ladder playing very specific decks. I don't oftentimes experiment with some of, you know, different archetypes, new deck builds. So I'm going to take the time to share some really cool decks, some super competitive, some maybe not as competitive, but regardless, very cool decks, very cool concepts from other players in the Runeterra community. And today I would like to share with you guys this very cool deck by Zero Infinity, who he had reached Masters Rank 1 on the SEA server. This is essentially like a very similar themes to old school Braum lifts where you play like the Starlight Seer, the Omen Hawk, and you buff the Braum essentially, and you just do a whole lot of nonsense, and it's a bit of a combo deck, and this is kind of like a really greedy, uh, mid-rangey kind of aspect to it too. So this is going to be a Targon and Freyold list using Diana. And Braum is our champion cards. We've got all the free old action going on here too, like Fury of the North, uh, Troll Chance going to be included, and of course, none other than Omen Hawk. But regardless, let's go through the list here quickly. One gift, uh, sorry, three copies of Gift Giver to give us more gems. The gems are going to be kind of cute for buffing up Braum. Uh, Omen Hawk obviously is going to be a three of more buffs as we go through the deck. Hitting this onto like something on turn two can be a little bit crazy. Even buffing Dyna is a little bit wild. Three copies of Dyna. We do feature quite a few Nightfall cards here. Dyna, Dyna is a pretty good support. And another good target for buffing because she sometimes has, has the Challenger, etc. And Quick Attack is kind of relevant. Guiding Touch is three of. Ways of healing Braum up. Ways of drawing through a deck. Drawing cards is really good. Lenari Shadestalker is three ofs. Another alternative way of pushing damage outside of Braum or Diana. Uh, you can go elusive and kind of buff buff up the Lenari Shadestalker quite a lot. Three Pale Cascades, Targon, auto include this card, it's just starting to become very insane. Three times Starlight Seer. You know, we have like Troll Champ, Pale Cascade, Guiding Touch, Gems as well for buffing units in our deck. Two Troll Chants as kind of like ways of protecting our key units and kind of lowering our opponents, right? One copy of Bastion for the uh, off chance that we can do something amazing with it and sometimes throw our opponent off expecting them to be able to remove our stuff three times crescent guardian another very good target for buffing with gems buffing in general you know overwhelm gonna push some damage three mentor of stones gem synergy value support synergy this card can sometimes be a little bit crazy as you curve into braum as well three times braum this is probably like the key key card in the deck and the reason why we consider doing what we are doing three fear of the north another way to push damage protect our units etc we all know how annoying it is sometimes when the brom kind of sticks in the field because you try and go all in on clearing it then they play like fear of the north they might play like well now they play like troll chant right and then they protect it and you're just like oh damn i shouldn't have gone all in on it two times star shaping Value generated towards the end of the game, you can sometimes use this card to look for an alternative finisher. Also, you can just heal up Braum if you need to. Five healing onto Braum at burst speed can be a little bit annoying. And uh, one times Cygnus the Moonstalker for an alternative way of going elusive and, you know, beating up your opponent. You can sometimes throw Cygnus, I'm sure, onto the Diana after she's flipped and just really go to town with some Nightfall stuff. You can even decide to, you know, go elusive with the Crescent Guardian and finish off your opponent here. Now, this deck seems like very interesting. Uh, Zero Infinity has reached Masters rank 1 with this kind of list. Now, whether or not I believe it is the most competitive deck and one that I would recommend for pure climbing might not be the case. Um, I think this deck was created at a certain point in the meta where it was able to kind of cheese out and, you know, get some wins. But as we start to settle and we're moving into what I believe is going to be like kind of like Shadow Wilds control, uh, atrocity kind of nonsense to try and beat up on the Aurelian Soul lists. Um, this deck will probably struggle into that matchup, but regardless, still a very cool deck, one that I'm happy to share. Let's go have a couple games, have a good day. So I've had a couple games so far with the deck, trying to get used to it before I started filming this. I versed this guy, this is my third time in a row versing him, and uh, I will say that for this deck, going up against specifically like Shadow Wilds, like Ruination, Removal, it is definitely not ideal. I feel like when Zero Infinity was playing this deck, he was playing it like not against this kind of matchup. This is a few days ago. Maybe it's probably starting to shift now, but still a very cool deck. And I think it does have a decent spread against some of the really greedy Aurelian Solus. This entire hand has to be kicked though. There might be reasons to keep a single copy of Bastion, which we only have one copy of it. So we might not find it again. I'm probably gonna keep the Bastion in hopes that I can find a decent early game. 
because this card should help us to finish the game. So we have Cygnus and Moonstalker. So, sorry, we have Cygnus and Moonstalker as well as Bastion. So we're probably going to look to somehow make it to a certain turn where I can go elusive with maybe Diana and push a lot of damage. If he passes here, I should take the pass. I think I've been making the mistake of uh, playing into him too much. So let's go for the Mentor here. I have the Troll Trance to protect them. Which is kind of key in this position. Uh, in the past couple matchups I had against him, the first one I, I think I really misplayed. Because like, I just didn't quite comprehend what we should be doing with the deck in the matchup. The second game was a lot closer. We just couldn't quite push over the finish line. And this one, I'm feeling even more confident with that pass. He's a deck that's running like Warding Stones, Atrocity, Trundle. He's just career got all that kind of stuff going on. Looks like he's skipped the first few turns, which must means that must mean that he's missed out on the Warding Stones, etc. Um, I am going to play Omen Hawk and I'm going to play Crescent Guardian, and then next turn we're gonna go for a big play, right? Or maybe not next turn, actually. I could do it this turn. But this looks like a pretty good, like, swing. Should I buff the Crescent Guardian, which he's most likely not going to block? I think we still will, though. He's going to be sitting on Vengeance. It might not actually be unrealistic of me to consider buffing the Omen Hawk to spread out my threats. He is a deck that runs Ice Quake, but I do have the answers to Ice Quake right now. So I'm going to spread out my threats just to be super annoying because his list is running like Vengeance. It's running Vengeance, it's running Ruination, it's running lo lots of nonsense. Do I think it's worth to consider saving this with Bastion now? You know what? If I do this, Bastion, and then I play Fury of the North, And then he plays Vile Feast, I lose. But he doesn't have Vile Feast, because his deck's super greedy. Um, that felt kind of worth to me. He missed Call for some pretty low value. I realized I played into Vile Feast so fucking hard just then. Uh, but regardless, we are okay. I actually haven't seen him play Vile Feast in the past two matchups, so... That's pretty good for us. I think it might be just be like a Vengeance, Ruination, Atrocity, Ramp, Trundle, uh, probably Lead Race as well. That's all his deck is. Avalanche, Withering Whale. <laughs> it should be a deck that we can punish if we get the right setup. Um, using Bastion there felt okay, but it's the only Bastion we have. So from here on out, we just have to find the right lines. Perhaps I'll let the Mentor go down here. I don't think he realizes that like, I can like gem up here. So I'm going to do that. I probably want to develop some more threats this turn. And he's going to play his next. Oh, I want to keep going here. I can't just stop. I must keep developing. I'm going to drop the Vire Moat because he slapped me the past two games. And I feel like I'm getting my comeback here, which is quite nice. Um, No reason not to kind of just put a gem on something, right? And we're definitely not developing this turn. This looks fine. And we get our revenge, right? We get our revenge against the Vivo, the player who slapped us two games in a row. Maybe I'll put the uh, game up where we lost to him to show you how close it was. And to be fair, I think he may have drew quite poorly that game. 
But regardless, it is uh, quite nice to get my victory back against them. Great, so we found a different matchup. Super excited now. So reversing Nightfall aggro, I assume if we can just find that brawn, find that curve, like this hand, this looks brilliant. I probably want to keep Pale Cascade as well. It's ways of protecting Starlight Seer, buffing the cards and deck, and this is a tremendous curve. Tremendous curve. We play Omen Hawk and we just skip this attack. Do I chump here? I don't think I want to chump here. I'm happy to take a little bit of damage, right? Uh, next turn we'll play Starlight Seer. Or we can't play Mental this turn. Yeah, we'll play Starlight Seer. He probably won't develop this turn. If I do this, I play into Pale Cascade, so we don't do that. So he's got a bit of a diner power turn if he has it. At least now if he plays diner, he cannot clear the Starlight Seer. So that's really good for us. So we're going to play Gift Giver here. Spectacular. If he passes, I will pass as well. <laughs> the Mentor of the Stones on a buff is kind of a little bit hilarious, not going to lie. I am not going to lie about that. Alright, so what can we do here? We can offer him a trade on the Crescent Guardian. Or I could just kind of ignore it for now. Play the Diner most likely. So threaten the value trade. Like he may not even want to swing here. Like, it might be worth to actually consider trading the diner off. This is not something I feel com completely comfortable trying to pilot though. So let's just think about what he's going to do next turn. So I've played plenty of Nightfall and I can tell you, if I lose this 5-3 into a diner... Like, I don't need to... If I go down to 12, we do have a lack of healing. We have, we have two star shapings in the deck for some cheeky healing. Those are not cards that we're going to find often. We also have Guiding Touches here. We're not exactly activating Diana's Nightfall. So you know what? I think the safest thing I can do right now is probably just block off the units. He's the more aggressive deck and we're just more of a like control deck, right? In this matchup, we're the controller. Safest thing I can do is probably just block it off. Play Mentor of the Stones this turn. Swing with my Starlight Seer. Four mana is quite an awkward turn for them. For our Nightfall, it's kind of awkward having this kind of mana, especially on defense. Because, like, you want to be developing to be able to develop another Nightfall unit. So, we need to have burst speed spells. Spacey Sketcher is not a card I often see in this list. But at least if he finds the Silence, I get to attack immediately with Mentor. So, that's what we'll aim to do this turn. We'll probably buff the Starlight Seer. At that point, we play into the Silence a little bit more, but at least we have multiple threats in terms of, like, either the Mentor or the Starlight. Like, I don't... They don't always hit the Silence. But in case it is a Silence card, I might choose to spread my threats out. Might not be unreasonable. Because, like, I'll be playing into the Silence card Equinox quite a lot if I do that. So I'm not going to play. I'm not going to do that. That's the one card that might throw me off here. The alternative is that if I'm not buffing Starlight Seer, if he finds the Challenger or Diana, that's going to be a bit of a shame, but we'll be, we'll be okay. Pale Cascade here. Uh, that's really good for us. Whenever we see aggressive decks use their aggressive tools in a more defensive way, oftentimes you feel like you're winning the game. Um, Hush is a pretty interesting find. I think we're glad to see that. We'll see if he opens up with the Equinox here. Mountain Scryer. Sorry, we're not versing Nightfall, I just realized. <laughs> we're not versing a Nightfall aggro deck, we're versing a... Um, 
solo diner deck. I've seen some people muck around with this kind of concept before. This is not a deck that runs a ton of removal. This is a deck that's mostly in allegiance. I'm pretty fine with just guiding touching here. Do I go as far as to play Diana this turn? Might as well. Might as well. We're the aggressor now. So we do in fact have the Equinox. So luckily we didn't play into like it too much. So he's invoked once, he's invoked twice. They sometimes find removal. This looks like a pretty good Psychness to Moonstalker. Actually, this is not necessarily going to find him the answer to Diana. Let's go for the Psychness here. I'm just going to spread my threats out a little bit. I'm going to swing with the Starlights here as well. In this position, like, I'm not really sure what it can do. My faith protects me. Night we'll just swing like this. So indeed, he does have the Hush. I wouldn't be surprised to see him double house here. And uh, that's really powerful. You never really play around hush. Okay, let's draw here. I'm probably going to have to hush this myself. Um, Alright, so how do we do this? There's no way for me to really protect my unit. My uh, Star I see Pretty much forced to this Pale Cascade here. Um, should I be blocking this 3-2? No. Nope. So this is a deck that doesn't really run removal. Might run Sunburst. I don't oftentimes see Sunburst in this list though. So let's go ahead and play the Braum. And we don't play around Sunburst. That's an Invoke. So ideally, Comet would be quite strong here. <laughs> okay, that's a bit unlucky. You on lands, you know not the meaning of so he, I'm pretty sure he just invoked that from Behold the Infinite. Because he already played the Mountain Squire card. So that was an extremely good find for him. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a feels bad moment. Okay, let me just double check like what we can actually find that's going to make any difference. Unfortunately, like at this point, the only thing I can hope for is to like find star shaping and find some nonsense from that. Outside of that, yeah, like we're not looking too good. He had the hush for our Moonstalker play. He had all this and all that. He obviously won't swing here. 
I wonder why you do this. Um, if he wants to throw his board at me, I'm fine with that. I don't think I have much use for these units anymore. So we're gonna do this. Gonna do this. Gonna do this. Yeah, seems good. Um, I think he's throwing his elusive unit away for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. He's obviously like, yeah, he's got Pale Cascade, but... I am a frail deck, right? I guess I just Fury here. Defensive Furies feel kind of really bad, but if I don't clear this unit... Then I'm not going to push any damage anyway, right? So... Seems somewhat reasonable. You know what I feel like this deck needs? You know what I feel like this deck wants? It's like a battle fury in this deck, you know? Darkness hides in their path. Uh, uh, yep. That's a problem. Okay, we have no more cards left in the hand. He chooses not to block there. Kind of smart, actually. So you can consider his deck a bit of a mid-range deck, which I would have thought that we would have had a pretty decent matchup, but yeah, all these like invoking cards are getting a little bit out of control. And I wasn't really able to deal with the Mountain Scry easily. The Hush early game helped him out tremendously. And we kind of just submit to the rest of the game. And we're just not really finding like the good top decks. So, minus, plus, minus, might as well go down to two. I'm not going to play around like removal in his hand. They don't naturally run Doom Beast and he pretty much needs to have like, you know, what kind of cards we need to have? You need to have double unspeakable horror, which I'm not going to play around double unspeakable horror. The Traveler created this card, the Traveler created this card, the Traveler, Lenari Priestess created this card. This is something I talked about once upon a time when I was doing my card reviews and stuff. I'm like, there's going to be a time where there's going to be players who constantly recycle Travelers and that's going to cost people games and it's going to feel really bad. This kind of does feel really bad to me. I feel like if it wasn't for him finding the constant cycle of Travelers, just generating pure value, maybe we could have had a chance to do something here. He also found the Lenari the Lenari Shadestalker to block our elusive unit. Uh, but yeah, it feels really bad that he's able to find, you know, chip damage through the Traveler and I'm just kind of stuck here, like, submitting to all these cards. It feels kind of awkward, but, you know, maybe it's not a favorable matchup for us. Um, just trying to think if there's a way for us to actually survive. Next turn. We need to find star shaping off the top and we need to actually protect the mentor of the stones for a chump blocker. So to do that, I do this. I probably don't commit my Fury of the North yet. Because if I'm not killing him, then it doesn't really matter. I won't exactly find lethal off the top outside of like damaging with units. He finds the obliterates. I go, okay. So like, imagine that he only finds one Traveler and then finds um, just the, the one Obliterate card, right? Instead of having these extra 3-4s, he just has the one Obliterate card. And then he does that, at least I'm not dying to the, like, the units on field, right? I have Star Shaping outs, maybe I'm still in the game. But unfortunately, yeah, my opponent high rolled with the Travelers. I think that's what ultimately cost us the game, even more than anything else. Feels bad, man. But, you know, maybe one day we'll come back strong.